Hello, in this tutorial we will try to create a stylized fire texture. Uh, I think I'm gonna split this tutorial into three parts. So the first two will be about how to make this uh, fire texture and third part we will just create um, some random sparks uh, to support our uh, fire. Okay, so we're gonna start with simple circle. We're gonna then uh, add some additional details and try to create this kind of shape. And we're gonna take this uh, and add even more uh, cutout uh, details, as you can see here. And I think this will be end of the first part. And in the second part, we will uh, try to create something like this. So we've got like a temperature range. So obviously the, this is like a hot spot. Then maybe this will be like a yellow part. And then that will be like a dark red uh, part of the fire. And we're gonna add some additional glow to it as well. Uh, just to make sure that it bleeds nicely into those areas. So for example, as you can see here, you've got this very bright yellow, but on the edges, that yellow is a little bit darker. Okay, and then obviously we're gonna probably create a couple of variations as well because, uh, uh, because of the substance design and we'll be able to do it very, very quickly with, uh, with just moving sliders. And that's the last one. And I made this by uh, duplicating uh, this texture and using the cutout shader in uh, in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna walk you through uh, this part as well. Okay. So let me show you what I've made in Unreal Engine with that texture. So as you can see here, we just got this simple uh, single texture of the fire. Uh, we're running some noise through it to get um, this part with the erosion as well on the texture and we have some random sparks coming off uh, this fire and uh, basically this fire is a uh, May content uh, for my patrons so if you would like to know how to do it feel free to sign up uh, but let's jump into substance now and let's try to create uh, this single uh, stylized fire texture Okay, so I'm gonna start with simple shape and I want this uh, disc shape. Here, I'm gonna scale it down to something like this. Obviously, we will be manipulating those uh, values later on to fit our needs. Okay, so first I'm gonna start with tile sampler. Well, first tile sampler, because I think there'll be three of those. And I just need to plug this into the pattern input one. And I'm gonna change the pattern to the pattern input. Obviously you can start with disk, which probably would be the same. However, I like to have like a separate control for the shape. So I'm starting with the pattern input. And in here, I'm just gonna go with maybe six by six, scroll it down, increase the scale and random position and maybe offset to 0.5. So if you get like a random uh, distribution of those uh, and disc shapes. I want to apply some uh, size random uh, parameter as well, however, only on the horizontal axis. So I want those uh, circles to be a little bit more stretched and maybe some scale random as well. I'm just going to increase this so I get something like this. Next, I'm just going to run it through transform and I'm going to stretch it on a height by 200. And I'm just going to blend it now. And this needs to go to the first input. And to the second input, I'm just going to put shape, and disk. And I want this to be something like and this. I'm going to scale it down as well. So we got like this egg shape because basically I want to, I want our fire texture to fit within that circle and I'm going to use this as a mask. So I'm going to plug this into second input and set it to subtract. Okay. So as you can see, we are already getting some of the shapes here, which is cool. However, I discovered that many times you have to plug the, uh, to the mask input as well, because if you go to the tile sampler and obviously if it doesn't have the same value as I have in a tile sampler, you might get something like this and you know, maybe it's not ideal. 
Uh, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to copy paste the shape and put it into the mask input here. And in here, I'm just going to scroll down till I find the mask uh, map threshold and I'm going to increase its size. Okay, so as you can see here, those only appear now within that mask. So if I'm going to scale it down, as you can see, we got um, a little bit more control. If it doesn't work for you, try to invert the grayscale, plug it back in. And you can go into this shape and scale it down. And maybe this technique might work better for you. And even still, if you want more control, so for example, you want the erosion of uh, the circle happening only on the top, you can run it through transform and you can lower this transform down a bit, like here. So for example, this will be the protected area. As you can see here, you know, those circle doesn't reach this area. And then you have the cutouts happening on the outside. Okay, so that's the one way to do it. Um, and now obviously we can go back here, try to get maybe better pattern here. But it seems like six is a, is a good value for me. So I'm just gonna manipulate couple values, see what I could get as I'm trying to get um, a, a little bit better shape. And now position random. So maybe I'll just go with uh, something like, uh, something like this for now. Obviously I can go back later on and just tweak it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy paste this uh, tile sampler now. I'm going to run it through transform. I'm going to scale it to 200 again. And I'm going to blend with this before I'll plug it into this uh, blend node. And in here, I'm just going to use the same trick, which is subtract. But now what I could do, I could go back to this style sampler and change its position. So I'm going to get even more cutouts. Just to create a bit more, you know, a different shapes. And now I can obviously go back to the uh, scale here and just scale it down. So I'll get even more uh, dynamic shapes with this one. Okay. Uh, let me find the scale. I may position random to get a little bit uh, varied shape. So again, maybe something like this. Uh, you can always go back to the um, this map um, mask map and scale it down if you want to get a bit more cutouts. I can't like this, but obviously we're missing a lot more data here. And then I want, so going back to the tile sampler, the first one, and maybe, you know, trying to get something like this and then position random as well to generate a little bit different shapes. And I think maybe those circles are maybe a little bit too large. So I'm just going to scale it down and try to get a better shape uh, now. I probably have to increase this mask map. So I think maybe something like this could work for now. Okay. Okay, so we've got two tile samplers that we can manipulate and get uh, what we want from those to get a, some style life shape of the fire, maybe something like this. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run it through warp. I'm going to put parallel noise here with 
maybe scale of 6 and I just want to distort this texture a little bit further so I get something like this and I think this will be our master node which with, <coughs> sorry with which we're gonna continue in the second part okay now it's just uh, because I mean this master uh, node needs to be really cool looking in terms of uh, you know the stylized fire so I'm just gonna go back to the tile sampler and try to get a little bit better looking shape and by just changing maybe position random Mm. Maybe the offset as well. Maybe the scale. Yeah, there are just, you know, many options now, now we have. So we could just change them and uh, pick something that looks nice. random probably not okay maybe the scale okay I kind of like this but I need a bit more data around here Sorry, I'm just going through those maps trying to get a, a little bit better shape. Okay, now I think those are way, way too small as you can see here. Uh, so I'm just gonna scale them back up. And then just a, a bit different position random value. Maybe I'll just put this texture, our uh, mask texture, a little bit um, down. I could increase our shape as well to be slightly larger to, you know, to cut out the stuff that you don't maybe don't want or scale it to this kind of size. So feel free to just, you know, change the values and try to find something that works for you and um, something that you're happy with in terms of texture. So I think I'm just going to end this right here with this texture. And we're going to continue with this in the second part, trying to get um, a little bit better look. Um, and obviously we're going to implement the colors and the temperature uh, thresholds as well. Okay. All right. So see you in the next part.